Now consider the problem of having a point charge. And this point charge has charge plus Q. Now at a radial distance R from this point charge, I can talk about a surface, a closed surface, which is in the form of a sphere. And I can calculate the net electrical flux uh, through this surface. Now, how do I calculate at a radial distance r for the spherical Gaussian surface, so-called spherical Gaussian surface? How do I calculate the electrical flux? The electrical flux phi e, remember, is the closed surface integral dot product of electric field with the uh, area vector of the area element delta a i. So for each area element here, you can see that since the electric field lines point radially outward, electric field will be parallel to the area vector delta AI for the area element AI, for the ith area element. So since this is true for all area elements on this uh, spherical surface, the dot product will be equal to EDA, since the two vectors are parallel, cosine zero is one. Now, if you consider the electric field E is only a function of R, which is for a point charge KQ over R square, uh, you can see that the electric field at a radial distance R from this point charge will be a constant on this surface. It will be equal to KQ over R square. So the electric field therefore comes out of this integral as a constant kq over r squared. Then we have the closed surface integral of dA, which is the surface area of this Gaussian uh, surface, spherical Gaussian surface, which is 4 pi r squared. So electric field is kq over r squared multiplied with the area 4 pi r squared gives us kq 4 pi k Coulomb's constant is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 permittivity of free space. 4 pi is cancelled, then we are left with q over epsilon 0. Now, this result that the electrical flux uh, for this closed surface that contains a charge q is equal to q over epsilon 0 is actually true for any closed surface. The electrical flux closed surface integral e dot dA is equal to the short total charge enclosed by that surface divided by epsilon zero permittivity of free space. So Q in is the net charge inside the Gaussian surface and electric field E is the total electric field. dA is the area element normal to the Gaussian surface. So it was our delta A i when we sum over this in the limit delta a goes to zero, this becomes differential area element dAi. Uh, so that's going to be turning into an integral, remember. So for the closed surface uh, flux, if I e, we find the e dot dA integral should give us q in over epsilon zero. Now, what is this good for? This allows us to calculate the electric field due to a charge distribution enclosed by such a Gaussian surface. The result is known as Gauss law. Okay, so in summary, we talked about a point charge at a radial distance r, we have a spherical Gaussian surface where the electric field is a constant on this surface because it's only a function of r, kq over r square, and the electric field lines basically point normal to the surface in the r hat radially outward direction parallel to the area vectors delta a i. Therefore, the flux becomes E D A. And since the electric field is a constant at a radial distance R E integral D A, which is E four pi R square, that's Q over epsilon zero. And this is true for any closed surface. The closed surface flux integral E dot D A is Q in over epsilon zero, where Q in is the net charge enclosed by that surface divided by epsilon zero, the permittivity of free space.